Good evening. I'm Zaragana. Welcome to the studio. Right. So, in the studio tonight, we're going to do some more work on this uh, shed. So, at the end of last stream, we are starting working on this window. And we're going to continue working on this window. Now, it's, I've got some colour in there. A little bit of colour in there. Don't quite know what I'm going to do with it. We're going to darken it down a little bit, I think. So we might be getting a visit from Theo then. But apparently not. So I'm just playing about with some rough details behind the window. In this particular case, there is actually sort of net curtains behind the window, but I don't really want to get to the point of trying to uh, simulate them. So all I'm going to do is just really sort of just sort of hint at there being something there. I'm not worry, really worried too much about what you can actually or can't actually see. So there's just sort of something behind the windows. Now then what I want to do there though is put in something like an edge. <coughs> hmm. Make 
uh, just a little bit narrower. So we've got something that kind of looks like um, a winter fair match. Hmm. Sorry, mind. Uh, hello, insane. Hello, welcome to the studio this evening. I trust you're feeling a little bit more awake and relaxed and than you were at the end of your stream. How did? I was about to say, how did it go? I watched most of it. <laughs> Uh dear. Uh dear. <laughs> weird sort of thing. Yeah, I think my brain's probably working about as like yours was earlier today. He said very carefully rephrasing what he was about to say. And actually I'm just thinking about putting a fan on. Yes, yeah. You were looking that way at the end. I don't know why you didn't stop earlier, to be honest. But uh uh I will kind of be, I kind of want to say I'm kind of pleased you didn't because it gave me something else to watch for a while but you know you really should have stopped earlier uh, <laughs> now then uh, this window it's even darker under this bit here So I'm not, uh, I'm putting detailing without putting any detailing. Hello Wolfie, how you doing? Oh yeah, I know I saw chicken arrived, but eh. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I know what it's like with, when people suddenly arrive, you kind of do want to just carry on a bit longer, but it only works for so long. Um, how are you doing Wolfie? Yeah, it's quite dark under there. Now, in the last stream, I put these these windows in really lightly, but in actual fact, the the they are darker than this. Who didn't see you? I saw you. Huh? Oh, you're right, I didn't. You're right, I didn't. But mm -hmm. now now you see, now now I'm thinking why not? Uh um it uh, I didn't see you. But I'm kind of wondering now whether you, <laughs> deaf to see it sounds, whether you were actually there <clears throat> and I didn't see you, or whether you weren't there and Twitch has just sort of dropped dropped you into the mess. Yeah, you obviously were there and I'm just blind. But for um, to my defence, you are the same colour as Petzl Box on my screen. And so, or virtually, so I probably just didn't notice you because of that. I did, but um, it was after um, I, I sort of so after you said you were exhausted, uh, insane uh, Sarah. By the way, which do you prefer, me calling you Sarah or calling you insane? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I meant it to sound like that, but <laughs> or maybe maybe you do. Uh, I was just going to have a play with the camera, which means we're going off screen a little bit. Because, I'm going to just try and bring the contrast up a little bit on that. Um, 
think of the video? Come on, talk to me. Thank you. Advanced settings. Now then, let's try and do this without the camera going unstable. Okay, bring the brightness down a little. That's a bit too much. Yeah, that's what happens. I get the flicker. It's a bit of a pain, is that? Sorry, right, let's have a look. Um, your insert, yeah, okay, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, Wolfie did actually sort of say, well, hello there, familiar face right at the start um, before you said hi, uh, insane. And um, then uh, I, I just hadn't noticed it. So I was just trying to adjust the camera, but I, I, you can just see what I'm doing here. Yeah, um, very just. If I, I need to knock the the gain of the camera down a little and thank you very much for the host very kind of you um, I need to knock the gain down a little bit but as soon as it, that happens you start to see the um, you, you start to see the flicker off the lights the 50 Hertz flicker um, so basically it's a terrible camera <laughs> for doing this it's a decent camera enough but um, not for not for a lot of craft stuff and <laughs> thank you as well, Wolfie, for the house, both of you. That's very kind. Um, I shall carry on. Uh, I shall just, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, you don't get to see the subtleties of the colours. But um, I don't really know what I can do about that. Finding good cameras without going to sort of expensive analog cameras with then a, a converter for them, you know, like an SLR or, or even some of the video cameras is uh, it's a bit difficult. And this thing is doesn't like blue. Well, it doesn't like purple. It thinks it's blue. Now, that's not necessarily uh, true, Wolfie, because. For a start, it means that there is two, well, three, because Insane is doing it as well, but um, three uh, channels broadcasting the same video. So at least there's there's um, more chance of people seeing it, which is fine. Right. As they say, every little helps. Yes, that's... that's Mind you, um, it, it quite possibly means also that you you're getting a, you get a better uh, uh, download, don't you? Sometimes uh, there's a couple of other people that used to watch that used to do that, so they could actually watch their own stream hosting me because they got a better um, download. But I don't mind. Thank you for thinking of it. As I mentioned, there's kind of neck curtains behind here, so the sort of 
well. There's not very many reflections, but there is kind of a texture behind the window. And it is, <laughs> despite them being white neck curtains, it is kind of dark because there's no light behind them. <laughs> I'm doing this with a relatively cool pen. Just because what it lets me do is build up the colour slow, uh, more slowly, which means I'm, I'm not having to rush uh, to get just you know to, to get a light colour. I don't have to be really quick at trying to uh, trying to move the pen. Um, ow. I've got a compressor underneath my desk and I've just kicked it and that hurts. <laughs> Can you host with auto host um, Wolfie? I would have thought a, a direct command would have overridden the auto host. Don't know, um, I, which reminds me. I think I've put you on my uh, on my uh, list uh, inside auto host list. There's not too many people on it. I I only auto host people I actually watch. So there's, so there's not too many people on it. <laughs> but you are one of them. I want a different pen. What I'm trying to do here, I, well I don't quite know what I'm trying to do here, but um, I don't have the right pen for it. I don't know what is the right pen for it, but th what I've, the one I've got here isn't. I, I kind of almost want something, hmm. Uh, I want something with a fine point, but a fine point actually wouldn't do what this is, what what I'm doing here. Um, a fine point would actually be too too fine um, with with the pyrography, which is kind of kind of a contradiction. I want something with a fine point to get small details, but a fine point actually won't give me those details because it will be too too fine a line. I need something that's really fine but gives me a wide, consistently wide effect. It's sort of like this but with a point on it. Um, and gives me that, that gives me a wide line but with a fine point. Uh, and which is, a, which is a total contradiction. And that's, that, that for me, that. An, it's, that's one of the things I always find difficult with pyrography is I want lots of detail in there kind of like what almost what I'd do with a pencil but you can't well I can't <laughs> uh, I, I can't get that detail with pyrography that I would with a with a pencil um, Part of that's just the medium, you know, you're heating uh, and colour is really, well, it, is, it takes a lot of practice to get right and I haven't practised enough. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have a Discord uh, insane. It's uh, non, not necessarily old school as such, Wolfie, but it's kind of... At this moment in time, having a guest, uh, having a Discord, that wouldn't be particularly productive. And on top of that, there's, I've got a website, I've got Etsy, I've got Facebook um, to maintain, and I've still got a lot of work to do on the website. And um, I'm also uh, doing stuff for you some stuff for YouTube 
Uh, no, I know you're joking around, but I'm just sort of explaining it because you've started the conversation. Um, you know, like YouTube, I've been putting up the, the videos of the uh, the truck build, but cutting them into... And it's kind of like there's only so many hours in a day. And um, with Discord, at the moment, to be blunt about it, there's not a lot of people watch me. And Discord wouldn't particularly encourage that, to be honest, I don't think. So it's kind of like, I don't really want to put the time into that. I'd rather put the time into something else at this at the moment. And uh, if nothing else then, one of the things at the moment is sat on the desk there is a brand new server for the house. My old one is sat over there. And what I'm trying to do is move the stuff off that one onto that one. Then I'll have a spare computer. So when I start doing the glass work, I can put that computer in the studio with the glass and hopefully I'll be able to broadcast it. Because I'm not moving my desktop computer out there. <laughs> There's no way I'm shifting that. Yeah, of course it's unfair. Um, the, the, the problem is, Wolfie, you see, with... Um, with text. It's really hard to, 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 to indicate humour. <laughs> but I am kind of old school in a way. I mean, there, there are times when, you know, I find it really difficult to understand just what the... Um, uh, why people are interested in certain things. I won't say Discord, but, you know, like, I don't know, like... Um, Facebook. What is it about f face? What do you put on Facebook? Yeah, I, I sort of get it, but I sort of don't get it. Um, I mean, I have been around since the start of the internet, so you know, and uh, uh, a phone is something that I make calls on, and uh, I don't carry a mobile phone except when I go out the house and that sort of thing. So I am kind of old school. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably why I love the music on your uh, uh, on your broadcast, insane. Because uh, it's it, it's all the things that I remember. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I I can't uh, especially. I mean, the, what was it the other day? The, the the other day I ordered something. They insisted that. I put a mobile phone number on the order. And it's kind of like, why? why? Why do you need a mobile phone number? They wouldn't allow me to put my home number. It had to be a mobile phone number. Okay, so, well. Um, which is kind of... That's great, except if you don't have one, that means you can't place an order. Okay, I happen to have one. Um, and so, you know, that... That kind of mess mess me up. At the same time, they made an order on the. Sorry, I'm mixing two things up. But on the on the another side, I also placed another order. That one too was apparently insisting on the mobile phone number. That one, however, let me put my home number in it. They didn't tell you why you need this, and I mean, according to the data protection stuff, they're supposed to do. But I don't tell you why that. I found out later that. That was so that they could send a text message to give me a delivery window on the morning of when they were going to deliver the item with a two hour delivery number. Only thing is, they didn't send a text message because my home number, my home line will accept text messages. But they've just gone, oh, it's it's a landline. Can't send a text message to a landline. So they sent a, they sent a voice message which says, you've got a text message. We can't deliver these to landlines. Right, but you can send me a message saying you can send me a voice message saying you've got a message for me, but I couldn't retrieve it. There's no way of retrieving it back. If you go on the website of the delivery, it just says we can't deliver to landlines. Well, why not? Mine will accept a text message. <sighs> it's it, mobile phones. It's um. Hmm. That, that kind of annoys me when I'm ordering stuff and they insist on a mobile phone number. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, we're, we're well it's delivered and crawl into bed with the food. <laughs> Eat it in bed. Have a... Um, have a bedroom picnic. And that, when I when I go away for work, that's kind of kind of what I usually end up doing. Well, because most hotel room, bedrooms, um, the the um, furniture isn't that comfortable, so I end up sort of laid on the bed or something, eating and watching a video. You'll probably come across it when uh, when you when you unpack. <laughs> It's kind of um, when I moved. It was it was kind of what happened what happened to me. I sort of I, I knew I had I knew I hadn't thrown anything away as such. I mean I'd thrown lots away, but I knew what I'd thrown away and what I hadn't. And yet, you know, it's kind of like even now I sort of open a bag and go, oh, that's where it was. Oh, is that what was you were waiting for? Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? That that is kind of annoying when uh, you, you you're all you're all expecting something and then all of a sudden, nope, not not for you, not today. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you like pyrography, I, I would say that these are definitely worth worth it. Yeah. Yeah, you're all ex all excited. Um, do I get I, I get annoyed when the delivery people just knock on the door. There's, we've got a doorbell. Where I am here in the studio, I cannot hear the front door if they knock on it. And where I work, for work, is a bit further away from the front door. And you get the knock on the door, and they they won't ring the bell. Because if it rings the bell, there's a sounder just behind the computer here, and it it goes off. It plays the Beach Boys, and um, okay, and say, and you know, they, they, then they go away and say nobody was in. It's kind of like you did not ring the bell, and half the time I get uh, if I ring up and complain, they go, um, yeah, we did. We rang the bell. Okay, well my doorbell records the exact time it's been rung every time it's been rung. Would you like a photograph <laughs> of the fact it hasn't rung? Uh, and yeah, I get I get annoyed like that as well. But there again, I'm an old man, I get annoyed about these things. Okay, oh, welcome back insane. Actually, the other the other thing that kind of annoys me about delivery drivers, even when they do ring the bell, is it takes me literally thirty seconds to get from here to the to the front door, and in that time they've gone, they're in the van and they're driving off. <laughs> oh, has he brought the food back with you with him? I mean, it must be even worse from you because I, I gather you it's a communal uh, doorway, is it, or something? From from what I've not on the stream, and you got to go you got to go down a few flights to get there, or a flight or two. Yeah, that would that would annoy would annoy me even more. Oh, in England, now oh, right. You've Pizza. Hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, I can't, yeah. You're making me hungry. I've just had tea. One flight of stairs. Yeah. Oh, so it's more important to talk to him than it is to, talk, to listen to me. Mind you, I must admit, one of the, one of the things I used to be able to do, because I haven't done it for a long time, a pair of headphones on, and of course, and I don't particularly like wearing headphones, but one 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 thing in one ear and one thing in the other ear, and I can listen to two things at the same time. Take, that's a bit weird until you're used to it. That comes as um, part of the job I used to do once where we'd be monitoring something and uh, holding a conversation with somebody, you know, like at the other end of a line, uh, in the other ear. And it's, uh, it's a bit of a weird, bit of a weird thing because you're actually concentrating on two things at the same time because you monitoring because you need to listen to something and uh, it takes um, it, it, it gets unnerving when you're talking to people as well sometimes because you can hold two conversations at the same time <laughs> you're talking to somebody but listen to somebody else uh, now Skype is kind of something that makes sense to me um, although I I don't actually have it on my home on my own PCs. <laughs> yeah. I I have I have um uh, I have streams like that where I just I don't even think about the, about the fact that I'm not talking. Uh, and you know, you suddenly realise that you know, I haven't said anything for thirty minutes. I mean, it's a lot easier when there's people. In, uh, yeah, it's a lot easier when there's people in chat, uh, and uh, oh, actually chatting <laughs> and saying something. But uh, yeah, it's, I think at one, I think at least one point today, I've, I saw you drop hot glass on the de you know, melt uh, drip hot glass onto the desk. So yeah, yeah, you must have been a little bit uh, distracted, to say the least. Let's tip these up. Get a bit of a hard line just across there. Hmm. I'm still getting flicker off it. Is that that? There we go. Can't get enough light onto uh, well, I can't. I can get. <laughs> I was about to say I can't get enough light onto what I'm doing. But if I put light on there, then it's t it reflects too much off the board. I really ought to get my easel out. I um, it, it's just laid on the box at the moment. But but I actually prefer doing pyrography on on a, an actual easel. And I can sit this on an easel, a painting easel, because it, it's a lot more comfortable for me to do it at, at that, and I can get sort of the angles on the tool a little bit better, and I don't actually end up sort of heating my fingers up quite so much. But I'm just being a bit too lazy to get it out to clear the desk, but that generally actually helps with the lighting as well, because then um, the light is reflected not straight up into the camera; it's reflected off. And so like when I hold that up there you can actually see some of the stuff that I've done as opposed to when I put it down there. It just vanishes in the glare. I'll try and hold it up. I guess I really ought to take the time but I'm, at the moment I'm doing about three different things on this desk and getting, um, getting the easel out and putting it away feels a bit like too much hard work. I, I, I would love if I ever won the lottery which will be really hard given that I don't do it. But if I ever won the lottery, one of the things I would love to be able to do is to have a space where I could have a, a ginormous room 
and I could actually have a table for each of the things that I want to do. So pyrography on one, airbrushing on another, scraper board on another, carving on another, and you know, like this. And then you can leave all the stuff out and you just walk up to something. I'll do that today. Um, I have a, I do have a small one. It's a desk, it's a, it's a desktop um, uh, easel, but it's, it's still a bit of a faff. I might, I, I, I'll, I'll see if I can do it for the next stream. Just uh, so it's not, it's not a full-blown floor easel. In fact, to some extent, a floor floor easel might actually be better. But um, just from the point of view, I can lift that and put it to one side. The, the desk one means I've got to move the desk. Um, yeah, I've got a cup of tea there. That's got to go somewhere else. The microphone has to move and everything's in. I was last using it when um, for pyrography. And I was doing some paper stuff. And, and uh, then I've got an A3 piece of paper on, and that's awkward because then I can't even see the chat because I have to put that on the board. If you ever try pyrography on paper, by the way, and you can do it, um, make sure you get thick paper and don't try and do it on a table that you like. <laughs> get yourself a scrap board to go underneath because uh, it tends to go through and keeps going. I learned that on my old table. Yeah, it's something. What is it? That's something a lot of people don't realise is you can do pyrography on paper. you get a completely different effect. I've only just started this one, I haven't done very much on it, but this is a leopard. And this is, this, uh, this is um, cold press paper. I was going to try some hot press, but I'm trying this first. Because you, you, you get the texture of the paper in there as well. You should, I must do some more on this one, I think. You can even do it on photocopy of paper, but that's really hard. If only because <laughs> it goes, you, you start pushing the pen through the paper if you're not careful. Yeah. Okay, this window frame is broken. I'm trying to decide whether to bother doing anything to. Yeah. The other problem I get when I'm talking on stream sometimes is I get really caught up in what I'm doing and then I completely forget that I'm even streaming sometimes. Yeah. Let me turn this up because I want this black or dark. But I don't want to go over it multiple times. I want a f flat. I don't want any depth in this. If you build up colour 
what you sometimes get is you get you, you get a depth to it a bit like French polishing um, which for some things is, is really good but this is a hole in a glass of a pane of glass and I, I kind of don't want a depth to it I just want it to be a black hole so I'm, I need, I've turned the heat up a little bit so that what I actually get is it goes quite dark straight away there is no no depth now it can be kind of a very subtle effect sometimes and it probably will be here but since it's a the other thing about being a broken window is it's got sharp edges that's something I've got to remember is you've got to have really clean sharp edges otherwise it doesn't look like um, broken glass which of course it might not look like to you anyway <laughs> oh dear I always say my art is 10 foot art it always looks better 10 feet away it looks even better if you turn around and look away from it but that's Actually, that probably sounds better if I if I turn if I turn it around. You know, um, my art's to ten foot. It looks better from ten feet away. It looks even better if you actually turn around and look at it. Um, hmm. So, in saying, are you actually going to have your own shop, or are you going to be part of the experience? That's why I might keep kept many to ask and keep forgetting. That's this is the time when a, a small fan on the desk works wonders. Uh, I um I just saw too late a cat hair land on the uh, land on the end of here and I didn't manage to clean it off before it melted. Oh, that smells terrible. Oh, of course, perspective. I do the same thing while I'm drawing sometimes. I forget about perspective. And I get, you know, it's bigger here than down there, and therefore lines converge. And uh, I, I quite often forget like I nearly did down here, I was going to do a line sort of up here to exaggerate it and it has to be down here but I was missing missing where it needed to be altogether let's flip that over Uh, 
Okay, I've still got this pin turned up, so I am having to work faster than I was doing earlier. You, well, I, I was about to say you, but I get, um, I tend to start to get, as the more I've, I'm doing with pyrography uh, in terms of, you know, I've been doing it for now, uh, an hour tonight, and, you know, I've been doing it fairly regularly. I tend to start to get impatient and um, wanting to uh, work at higher heats just because I want to work faster. I sort of get get slightly impatient with building colour up, and it so it's one that I've got to really sort of fight myself against because the slow build actually works better. Um, it makes things a bit more expensive to uh, uh, to commission, but you get a better result. Um, but uh, I have this real tendency. I want to see results, and if it's not coming fast enough, then I then I always keep wanting to turn the heat up, and then uh, the risk of making a mistake at that point <laughs> uh, just grows so much. There's been a few times when I've got uh, when I sort of wished I hadn't uh, succumbed to the temptation. Uh, just put a, a bit of detail or uh, suggest some something in the window you done any more 3d designs Wolfie it's been a while since you've mentioned it I don't know if you've uh, Have any been sort of successfully sold yet? Okay. Well, there's something in the window. Um, let's do this one. I still got to do something about the frame. It's not an easy thing to get detail in. The pyrography isn't um, it isn't a highly detailed design. You you can sort of fake the details sometimes, so it looks more detailed than it actually is. And of course, the larger the scale that you work at the more detail you can actually put in. And if I was doing this at A3 for example, twice this size, then the shed's twice the size, so the detail is twice the size. It suits then sort of the, the fairly wide-ish sort of markings that you get from pyrography. Although I keep saying wide-ish, I mean you literally can use knife edge blades so and, and, and a little you know if you use the tip of this you can get really little tiny pinpricks which is really good if you like doing pointillism um, they work really well for that as well let me turn this down because I want to this one is a razor tip And this particular one, an SSD10, which the, the D10 I think is a dual, but there's a single one. I'm not altogether sure that it's specifically worth the extra for the two, um, to plug two pens in at the same time. They change fairly easily, so... If you're looking for a... Um, a B 
burner um, insane my personal recommendation is to look for one that's got uh, pens where you can get lots of nibs lots of tips but ideally ones where they are welded rather than screwed in so you can get lots of um, lots of different fixed tips and I haven't tried enough machines to know which ones are best and which ones aren't uh, this one seemed like a good one and um, you know getting some of these things in, there's a fair number in, in the States but getting some of the, the machines here in the UK or in Europe is a little bit difficult I know the razor tips yeah okay I do tend to well remember you see I'm getting old I don't always remember what I said <laughs> um, Yes, but you may. Yeah, you know, what I was about to say is the razor tip seems to be more available in Europe <laughs> than it is in the UK. Right, I need to just erase one of the markings from underneath there, if it's going to come out, yes it is. I look forward to seeing what you actually, I'm assuming you'll do, well maybe you won't do it on stream, but I'm looking forward to see what you might come up with in saying when you start doing pyrography. I remember there's um, on YouTube there's there's uh, one <laughs> don't forget it's a Z <laughs> I'm telling an American that razor is spelt with a Z hmm um because <laughs> you spell everything weirdly um you, you did find one the other night because you sent me a link to it which I don't have anymore. A Canadian, so I mean you, you can always find you should be able to find uh, razor tip in Canada, the the parent, the the main company, even if you can't find a local uh, local store to show him it in. That's right, yeah. Because see, if all else fails, I might even have a, in one of the panels on my um, carving. No, I haven't. Yes, I do. I do put a. Yeah, the, uh, it, if you have a real problem finding it, maybe, do they still have it in? Uh, no, it looks like they've gone away. Okay. That means I've got to change one of my panels. 
I was about to say below the, below my stream window, there's um, there was a link to a place in the UK that had them, but um, it looks like they've gone bust or they've no longer um, uh, no longer met any website, which is a pity, because they were about the only place I could find in the UK. Yeah, uh, that doesn't sound like it doesn't sound very good at all. Plenty in the States, but... I'm now looking just in uh, myself. Hmm, that's a problem for me. Yeah, because there, there isn't there isn't too many um, machines. Uh, over here, Peter, the Peter Charles machines, but they're all all sort of make your own nibs type of thing, which I don't like. Um, Mm. It may end up being an import job. Ah, that's a... That's a... Uh, that's a bit of a downer. If they're not going to be available in Europe that easily. Actually, at the moment, postage of stuff from the States isn't that cheap. And most of it, well, the, there's, there's, there is another machine that I quite like the look of at the time and still quite like the look of. And I can't actually remember what it's called now. Um, it's, it's a very similar machine to, to the one I'm using. I um, wish I could remember what it's called, because that's available in the States as well. They seem to have a larger range of pens though. Unfortunately the two are sort of slightly different now. The, the, the other machine, um, the plug and socket are reversed, <laughs> which I actually like better. <laughs> the reason being that um, sometimes these uh, these sockets get a little bit loose if you're pl plugging and plugging them over time they get a little bit loose tightening up these connectors this connector here is easy just a, a slight nip with a pair of pliers tightens that up but the center connector um, is inside the end of the pen which you can't actually see but in there and try to, to, to tighten that up it's kind of like stick a pointy object down and sort of try and just you know bend it slightly i've had to do that once or twice with this pen because i'm always plugging it and unplugging it for for things and that's the only thing i don't like about having a socket on there the other machine has the plug on there and therefore you can tighten that up easily and if you if the socket on the end of a cable gets sort of um, a little bit loose and you can't tighten it up very easily then you can always get another cable it's easier to get another cable than it is to get another pen. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was. You're right. And I mean, that same night I had a look as well because uh, I thought, I, you know, I'll have a, have a, I do have a look from time to time and you prompted me uh, for new pens, for different pens. I mean, I'd love to get a little tiny ball pen, which is literally something like that, but it has a little metal ball on the end. Uh, which which is sometimes a bit easier for for lining or for for writing with than than this because this is a bit like a calligraphy pen it's it's broad one way narrow another whereas the the ball on the end is literally you know the same width no matter which way you drag it um, I could you know and, and things like this I'd love to get a fixed tip version of this rather than this one but so I do keep looking. Hmm. Uh, I wonder why. Unless some of these export bands and things like that that um, Trump is uh, putting on is just making exporting it uh, more expensive. Okay, Wolfie, have a good night. Enjoy your film. Because <laughs> I bet that's what you're going to watch. <laughs> See you on another stream. Let's see what we can do about this, the frames. Now what I'm going to do here is exaggerate the colouring. The frames are white and it's it's a real subtle shade difference between the front and the, the edge of the frame and there's no real way to do that in uh, pyrography that I'm aware of anyway so what I'm going to do is kind of cheat and actually sort of make it a noticeable difference. Hmm. 
I can tell when I'm concentrating on something, as I was trying to do there to get a line in. I start to stick my tongue out. I don't, know, don't quite know why we all do that. <laughs> I don't know what evolutionary benefit there is to sticking your tongue out when you're concentrating. Maybe it's to cool your brain down. I don't know. But it's amazing how, how many people do it. Of course, now I'm being, being a little bit self-conscious about the fact that I was doing it. expect to see. So I'm about to I'm about to break a rule. Not that they are actually rules. They're all guidelines. But uh, I'm I'm about to do not what I see but what I what I know. <laughs> um, this particular bit I'm just doing here, which is kind of like the underframe of the window, is actually lighter, just the way light's reflecting. But I know if I try and do that in the pyrography here, it's going to look a bit odd. So I am cheating, and I'm doing, you know, because you, you, you expect something that's underneath uh, and angled completely away from the light would be darker. But I'm doing what's expected at this particular point. I really ought to do a big shadow from there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's it's just some odd weird things like you know like it's exactly like you know, I, I I tend to sort of stick mine out the front. Other people stick them out the corner of the mouth, but um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, insane. Have a good evening. Have a good rest. If you can't remember if you stream tomorrow, I know you've told me, but I can't remember. Um, so if you are, I will probably be around. Um, probably more lurking than anything else. Otherwise, have enjoy your meal. Have a good evening. I don't have a lurk command, so. On this channel, you just go silent. That's starting to come together. You can start to see, I'm just looking on the broadcast window, oh, the broadcast window. 
Um, you're starting to, I think you're starting to see the um, shape of the window there. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, all those wires, you have to be careful you don't pull them off. That monitor. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, get, get, start getting annoyed at some glass that won't go in where you want it, and you get heart rate peaking. <laughs> Then have to explain to the consultant why all the peaks there. Well, I was trying to get this particular, you know, tweety shape. <laughs> hmm. No. Well, I'm not a doctor. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh... Okay. I um, I I've had uh, I once. Don't take medication for it now. I used to get atrial fibrillation, which is um, an arrhythmic heartbeat. And that kind of makes me, uh, that sort of made me feel really odd at the time. I was say exactly dizzy, but I ended up in hospital for that. Yeah, I don't know, my, my, my resting rate is around 60. And I have no idea what my active rate would be. Mine has always been relatively, relatively low. Yeah, 130 for no reason. That's not good. There'll be something, of course, but it's as you say, it's finding it, which is what hopefully the heart monitor will help with. It's kind of well, it's not it's not the same as, but it sort of is. Has a, there's a kind of a similarity, which is, means that there's nothing completely similar about it at all. But um, um, Lady Zara has diabetes and trying to correlate what's going on with the um, blood sugar readings. Uh, you know, to, to sort of say, oh, it's at this reading because, and the kind of there's. You can never work out what it is that's causing him to do anything. That's interesting. It, um, I have I have had episodes like that. Um, effectively, I start to pass out, but that's usually with sort of quite strong exertion. So um, I'm not out of breath or anything. But I don't know, let's, you know, say carrying a sack of potatoes for 100 yards. And I've just made that up. But that sort of thing, I mean, I've had it happen two or three times in the past where you know, I'm, I'm moving something fairly heavy and uh, for a distance. And I've um, got really, really close to passing out. And, you know, vision goes, it goes black. Um, you yeah, know, rocking, you know, all sorts of things just don't feel. Yeah, and then I get completely wet through. It's absolutely soaking wet. Uh, before I sort of recover and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't. 
I don't think I've ever felt it felt anything like that in a sauna. Just, I mean, I know what saunas are there for, but I kind of don't like getting whole sweaty. <laughs> so, kind of going in a sauna sort of doesn't feel right. Oh, that's not nice. It only sent me about half an hour um, when I stop sort of causing it to uh, uh, to recover. The atrial fibrillation was weird though, it sort of, it, it came on one night and I can't remember why, you sort of, it just did real sort of, well, you know, you sort of feel like your heart's turned over if you like, and then I just felt weird and oh, I'll go to bed. And I got up the next morning and you still felt it, so I better go to the doctor's, and at which point it was, can you get to the hospital fairly quickly? <laughs> And then I was sort of in the hospital all day, and he, and he, he didn't stop. Apparently, you know, these sorts of things generally stop by themselves. Mine wouldn't, so they were actually going to um, give me a drug, which would momentarily stop the heart, and then it would just restart basically, and, and that should cure the arrhythmia, uh, you know, the, the the fibrillation. And it was it was quite funny because. Uh, just before they they gave me the the drug to do it, they 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 wanted to flush the because I've got a you know thing stuck in my arm. They wanted to flush the lines out, so they took the they they just injected some water into the line to clear clear the line. And at which point my uh, atrial fibrillation just stopped dead and, and it went back to normal. And the machine, you know, I, uh, I, the doctor was monitoring it because he was looking at the machine at the point where, and, and I both said at the same time, that's fixed it. <laughs> I didn't need the drug. Um, I just needed water, cold water. But I was in, you know, I was in hospital for about six, seven hours that day. I tend to take a preventative uh, drug for several years. It, uh, it's a weird feeling as well. I kind of would recognise it now, but I don't know if you've ever sort of felt um, extremely anxious at one point, and then it was kind of feeling like extremely anxious. There was a sort of feeling you sort of go, <gasps> you know, and you chest is uh, no pain or anything it's just a really weird feeling. yeah I'm okay um, I've not I've not to the best of my knowledge I've not had it might have had the odd a uh, couple of beats that were uh, were out but I've not had it since and uh, but I it was uh, it was interesting it wasn't painful or anything so I then to take beta blockers for uh, for a while, which was uh, useful because I was already taking them because I get migraines. Oh, I don't get them now because I take the uh, take the tablets, but uh, the preventative. But because every time I go for anything sort of medical now, I always you know I always get keep getting asked how you know because the medication I take, which is a is a beta blocker. Those are used for people with heart problems. <laughs> so whilst I was taking them for, for that for a while, I don't take them for that anymore. But every time I sort of go anywhere medical now, they go, uh, oh, what's the heart problems you've got? And I don't have any. But this, yeah, that medicine you take for migraines as well. So it proves, proves we're all weird. <laughs> um. How do I want to do this? I want to do that. That wants to be a bit darker. That wants to be a bit darker because I want the bit above it to be a bit lighter. I don't want it to be white, I want it to be... So I'm playing with c contrast, with colour, with differences in colour. Because this, above the frame here, 
top of the frame where I'm doing now is is in shadow. It's not white, it's a grey. But I need to distinguish it from the bit that's in slight shadow just underneath it, and that was a, that was light. But if I'd have put this just where it is here, the two would have been the same colour. And you wouldn't be able to see the difference. So what I needed to do was just darken that down a little bit so that you can actually see the difference when you're looking fairly close up here. So it's, it's not always with pyrography or this style of pyrography. It's not always about the absolute colour. It's about the difference between them. And you can sort of play some quite interesting games with it because of that. That's, a, that's kind of a really subtle thing there, but it is actually... Well, to here it's just visible. Mm. Oh, they've not uh, they've not made me lethargic. I kind of well, I kind of know sort of know what you mean by tingly hands. I don't get them. I'm lucky to say. I think um, I think they well. I don't I don't know for certain. I'm not a doctor, but I think as the um, I think the reason for the the tingles is it slows your heart rate down did the beta blockers uh, which is why they don't like them for uh, for athletes um, and if you slow your heart rate down your blood pressure isn't necessarily as as high I guess and you don't get as much blood flow and if you don't get as much blood flow to your extremities and you get get the tingles you, you're starting to go slightly numb I don't get that but I do um, I do, I, do, I do if I'm laid down and I go into a full resting heart, heart rate, I do get sort of um, restless legs. <laughs> I can't lay still. So, very occasionally after, in the middle of the night I've got to get up and just walk around just to sort of uh, get a bit of blood flow. There you go. It's weird the sort of things you talk about on, on streams. Okay, so that window will do for now. <laughs> uh, let's move on to... Let's put a something across the top here of the door. Let's have a bit more heat for this. Because I'm being impatient again. Uh, actually what I'll do is I'll just erase the guidelines that I have there tip for pyrography is you don't need to press well not unless you're using like a branding iron um, where it does it does help a little bit you can um, I am literally just brushing the top of the wood here I'm not putting any pressure at all so it is just, you know, so it, it's sliding over the top of the wood quite nicely just because I'm not putting any pressure on at all. But I'm still getting colour because it's the heat that's doing it, not, not the actual pressure. If you do press down, you do get a little bit more heat transfer. But what you can end up doing then is digging into the wood, which is okay if you want the texture. If you don't want the texture, then that's not a very good thing to do. Uh, 
Uh, that wants to be a bit darker still. So in some ways it's kind of like, it is kind of like painting with a paintbrush. You know, you kind of wouldn't ram your paintbrush into the, uh, uh, onto the surface. This is kind of like the same thing. In fact, it's a little bit weird at times because it almost feels like the colouring is coming out of the end of the tool. It's not, but it sort of feels like that, the way it sort of follows the tip. One reason why I tend, to, uh, tend often to describe this sort of thing as painting with heat rather than pyrography. Because when you say wood burning, um, well, apart from the fact that people expect to see flames sometimes, uh, they uh, they don't always expect to see this kind of art. The, the sort of thing they see a lot of is the outlined or the pure black and white. This, f f um, in quotes, photorealistic style is something that most people tend not to associate with pyrography. Plus, saying painting with heat tends to people it tends to make people ask, "What's that?" <laughs> so you get you get a, you instantly get a subject to uh, to talk about. Now then, I think what we'll do is we'll do something similar as to what I did there for this window. As it looks quite good. I'm avoiding the door. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with it. And I can always tell when I'm avoiding something. Well, I can always tell uh, that I, t I tend to avoid doing the awkward stuff and leaving it while last. Which is a little bit silly in a way because if I can't manage to do the awkward stuff that I'm leaving then by the time I get to doing it I've spent hours doing all the rest and getting it just how I want it. And if I mess up with the difficult bit I've just wasted all the rest because I've got to start again. Which, I, but I still can't get into the uh, sort of the mindset or the habit of that's the difficult bit. Let's do that first because if I mess up, then I've done not very much of it. Though I suppose you can always look at it the other way as well. In that, if I've done all the rest of this and I mess up on that, then I'm going to do my darndest a not to mess up <laughs> and b to fix it. Whereas if I'd done that first, I'd throw it away and start again. So, I'm not quite sure which is the best way of looking at it just yet. I guess you can sort of look at it sort of both, both ways, really. I mean, with some some particular subjects like a portrait uh, where I'm doing people or, or perhaps even animals the one thing I will always tend to do first is the eyes because they are the they're the bit that attracts everybody's view and if you see uh, see um, a portrait or you see a portrait of an animal or a person most people look at the eyes first and if you can't get those right then at that point you, you, know, you that is one way you tend to sort of give up and throw it away and start again there's little there is little to be achieved by saving saving the eyes while last because 
they are the hardest things to fix if you uh, if you if you can't get them uh, get, can't get them right it can be an awful lot of work to uh, to fix them i mean it can even be something as simple as as trying to get them both pupils looking in the same direction for example assuming that I mean, it's a normal eyesight obviously there are some some instances where there is an eye issue where people do look in different directions but um, if it's uh, if that's not the case then getting them it just lining the two pupils up that's one of the key things to do to start with with a, with it you know, do your pupils first or at least uh, an outline or, or a pale version of the pupils to get them looking in the same whatever the direction is but getting them looking in the same direction so that it, they visibly look like they're looking in the same direction because if you don't get that that's the basis of the eye if you can't get that then it doesn't really matter what you do around it because the the iris etc uh, varies slightly you know lots of lots of minor variations in it and the, just the patterning of the iris can hide a lot of stuff as well but the pupil being is it's probably the blackest thing on a pyrographic image um, not getting that right is really noticeable um, right let's erase some some stuff here yeah I can do that I know where everything is Well, it certainly looks like on the next stream I will not be able to avoid doing the dirt. <laughs> Although I can probably try. Think, I was just trying to think if there were any crafts etc where so you know a mistake like you know whatever the mistake might be like I can't get the door right or something where it doesn't matter because it's it's easy to try again I'm just can't really think of anything I was thinking of the airbrushing but yeah that's the same problem you get that well I suppose airbrushing is a little bit easier because you can just paint over something um, if I was doing this in airbrushing in monochrome, I could always paint the background colour over again. Although, yeah, black and white I can do. White on black I can do. Coloured backgrounds are a little bit harder to match, but you can just paint over. Generally, you can paint over with white and then go on again. Uh, carving is one that you don't want to make too many mistakes on. Yeah. Well, I did. I did uh, Ruth the dragon that I've carved. I I did get um, his wing, wing join wrong four times. It was four times, and I had to carve the whole piece down a level to be able to try it again. So I ended up carving the the top the top part of of Ruth the dragon. I think four times it was until the on the fourth attempt I got the wing join right and uh it was it was quite lucky because the, the wood was starting to get a bit thin but uh color pencil yeah i keep it's, i haven't done a lot of work with colored pencils to be honest 
I do I do have some. I keep meaning to play with them, but I, I don't I haven't actually tried it yet. One of the things I've sort of been inspired to do was try some pastels. I mean, I've, the the one thing that pastels has bothered me with is the messy. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of not a messy creator. Uh, that doesn't mean the desk isn't covered in stuff, but I kind of don't like getting covered in paint or yeah you know, pastel. And yet, um, who is it that? I was watching Lady Lucian here on Twitch who does some absolutely amazing pastel stuff and I kind of would love to try it and uh, I think um, that's probably probably that's one of the things I'd, um, I, 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 I do have an electronic art package here um, on on, on the computers which is uh, painter cobalt painter I keep I keep meaning to play with pastel on there but it's not quite the same as real pastel but I keep wanting to have a go I say you got into glass <laughs> I think I told you the story of me, me getting into glass isn't it it's actually Pokey Ranger I guess that's got me into glass um, I'm sure you've seen him on, on Twitch he was the one that's Technically, I guess, got me into glass. Yeah, then. Oh, yeah, I'm running cool. That's good. So I'm kind of starting to get a little bit excited about uh, glass. I, te I tend not not to get very excited about things um, like you know starting starting new things or whatever. Um, um, it, it's probably slightly as a self-defense type of thing. I can't if I'm not excited, I can't be disappointed. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been interested in it for so long, and sort of been, you know, pl the the one day course that I did, sort of planning that, planning to do that for, you know, something like two years, that I, I almost can't can't uh, avoid getting feeling a little bit excited about the fact that um, I'll have to start ordering stuff shortly. I'll have to go find somewhere that will sell propane. <laughs> I know that feeling. Was it yesterday afternoon? Um, I found myself wake, sat at the computer here uh, uh, waking up after having been asleep for two hours. Didn't even know I'd uh, fallen asleep. Have a great uh, night. I mean, it's what? Coming up to 10 o'clock for you, so it's getting quite late. Um, thank you for, for dropping in and saying thank you for the host. Absolutely fantastic to talk to you. And I'll uh, look forward to seeing your next stream as well. Yeah, I'm only going off for about another 10 minutes and then I'll be stopping. So, you've been here for almost the whole stream. And don't you dare think about staying around for another 10 minutes, otherwise I'll stop early. <laughs>
Right, although it's very, very pale, I've got a basic window shape, window paint shape in here, which I'll then sort of just add colouring to. And then we'll put some something in the around in the frame. Now then, this is further away. So what we're going to do is make this slightly darker than that. Um, it is actually in practice. There's trees all around here, so it is quite dark at this back end of the shed here. And by making it quite dark, I can mix it working with the white frame around it a bit easier. Again, I'm not taking too much care of her getting uh, a perfectly smooth colouring because reflections and I may come back in afterwards and just Put an odd dark mark in there, just in <laughs> Harry Potter reference, I guess. Um, an odd dark mark in there, just to add a little bit of interest into the frame, into the window. Now, but one of the things is because we are further back as well, you can start to fuzzy things a little bit, uh, which kind of is, you know, things that are in the distance are less sharp and generally speaking have less contrast. Now you can't go absolutely silly, I mean this isn't like a landscape where you've got a real depth of field. But you can be a little bit sort of less precise as you go back. But then you do need to be somewhat consistent in doing it as well. So much of what's around here is fairly fairly sharp so I can't go very fuzzy because then it would be in contrast to what's already there. So it is something to sort of bear in mind. I say more more applicable perhaps when you're doing um, uh, more landscapey type things you know why scenic type views
which also incidentally just brings to mind if you ever want to do sort of this sort of style of pyrography and you end up looking for inspiration because sometimes it just doesn't come to you then um, have a look at old photographs whether on the web or whatever uh, or specifically if you're doing searches do, you, uh, do a search for things like sepia photographs um, and you'll see photographs with a colouring that's very much like this sepia is, is um, it's from the is it the iodine? I think it's the iodine uh, in the old in that was used at bromide uh, in the old uh, photographs for that it actually produced the colour, the black colour and over time it, it sort of goes brown which is precisely this this sort of colour and so you know, if you if you look at some of those sorts of photographs um, you can you can sort of see all sorts of things where yeah it looks good in this tone you know landscapes uh, I mean things like old western towns for example fantastic sort of um, material for pyrography in a way because you know that that sepia toned uh, buildings and things um, just sort of suits it really well It actually suits sepia uh, turned um, head brushing as well, because <laughs> um, as it happens, and it's what what brought it to mind, is I do have uh, an airbrush uh, picture of uh, a western town, uh, you know, cowboy type town. The, uh, the 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 funny thing about that is it's modern. It's actually the um, the the um, pictures that I took, photographs that I took, which were in full colour, um, were uh, of a film set, and they weren't anywhere near America. Um, in fact, they were in Spain, and I took pictures of a film set and and rendered those uh, in airbrushing in, uh, in, in with sepia paint, which is again this sort of colour and worked monochrome. And so it uh, you got you know it, it's produced a really sort of interesting old looking uh, painting. <laughs> Paintings don't change colour, photographs do, but it's uh, if you sort of look through Google Images or you know or other search providers' images at things like old Western photographs, you can get a, a heck of a lot of ideas of things that. Um, you can do our pyrography of if you sort of like those sorts of pictures so having laid down a sort of a turn I'm just putting marks in here Just so we've got some light and dark areas on the window. No idea what they are, what the reflection is, if it's a reflection or it's something inside. But we're just sort of seeing something, so it's not playing. There's, there's, there's an interest to the window. And I'm sort of being randomish. It's really hard to be random, but. Just letting the tool dance over the over the wood, keeping it moving. Really, I don't want a dark blob. I sort of just want slightly different colours. Uh, almost a little bit of a scribble. 
and with that I think what we'll do is we'll stop it for today we're at nine o'clock which is roughly when I would normally stop anyway I've got the frame to do around there then gonna tackle the door then decide <laughs> quite what to do I've got to put something to terminate the bottom of the shed uh, which will probably be just sort of like a, a wood bar across there uh, in practice in the photograph there was stuff in front of it so it couldn't actually see what it looked like under there um, but I'll probably put something in with a board you know another board perhaps down here make it dark underneath here because it would be there's a hill down here so it's sort of flat here and there's a hill up here that unfortunately shouldn't have been there but we'll see if we can disguise it ultimately scratch it out in some way um, maybe if I'm putting grass on I can sort of disguise that which is maybe how we'll get rid of it but put something in often with this that negative space is as important as positive space so sometimes it's, it's what you miss out that's important as opposed to what you put in so um, yeah, the wide areas is stuff I haven't put in but obviously yeah, it's a window frame it's important that it's there and you can see it's there even though I haven't put anything there so that's a negative space sometimes the negative space can be black so that negative space that's there um, which is black will tell part of the story when I put the door in because it's a warped door um, and we'll probably continue it up there a little bit um, so the door's slightly warped and bent and it's part of the story but it's it's a negative space it's defining what's around it as opposed to it by by itself being something anyway next stream will be on it's Monday today so it will be Wednesday 7 p.m. UK time that's 1800 hours GMT and if you would like obviously follow the channel or uh, follow me on Twitter as well it's as ever Gennart on Twitter and I, I was about to say I tweet when I go live and of course um, uh, Twitch will notify you if you want picking either of those well I've just realized I forgot to tweet tonight <laughs> oh dear I got the camera so I got the glasses I got the computer set up I got my cup of tea I got the burner turned on. I made sure the mic was working. And I forgot to tweet. I always forget something. But usually I tweet when I go live. Uh, if you'd like to see any of the earlier broadcasts of this, there's only a couple now which are available on, on Twitch, but some of the earlier ones, the very start, they're on YouTube, youtube.com slash So you can see me there as well. Uh, all the... Um, older broadcasts are there so there's some 800 videos 600 videos over 800 hours of uh, video uh, on various things pyrography wood carving making models um, scraper board punch craft jewelry making engra uh, engraving carving power carving um, making a 3d printer making a helicopter they're all there the old in series these should be nice and easy for you to fix and since I'm doing the full advert set now you can find a work in progress um, website saragonart.com uh, where it's starting to tell you a little bit about the art forms and about some of the pieces um, like Sunset um, Salute to Sunset for example the African Savannah what it was and why um, and one or two other uh, of the crafts as well that I'm going to gradually build up as time allows so might be a good thing to keep dropping in occasionally and of course there's the Etsy shop for things like the the jewellery, the chains boy my arm looks dark but that's just because of how I've adjusted the cameras um, and the shadow chainmail jewellery and bead jewellery uh, bead chains uh, are available um, Etsy.com, sorry, zaraganart.etsy.com. It's the other way around that one, but you're seeing the uh, the general gist of things here. Zaraganart's in everything. So I think that's about it. Thank you all for watching. Um, Wolfie and Insane, who both hosted this evening, thank you both for the host. If you're still around and watching, or you look at the video later, it is very much appreciated. 
And for anybody else that's watching, thank you for, uh, for sticking around. Hope I'll see you all again on Wednesday. And bye for now.